welcome to my workshop. Okay, so this is the build so far. Um, I'm, I haven't been on this full time uh, because I had other things to do, but um, all told I've been on this about between three and a half and four hours. Um, it's not a bad build. It's uh, pretty straightforward. There's a couple of um, couple of little things that uh, you should probably be aware of. Here we are connecting these up. Now the colour coding may be different in your country. This is Australia, so live is brown, neutral or negative is blue, and yellow and green is earth. So. Yeah, let's put them in here. Those two in first, like that. Don't over tighten them, but they must be very, or oh, quite firm. And actually, most important of all is the earth. Now what you should be able to do is not actually see much wire there at all. So that the sheath, right, or the insulator should be near up right to the, 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 the join where it is there. Now then this is the main DC feed, okay. Uh, this, so this is AC, this is the feed into the unit from the mains power uh, and incidentally the first thing you should do when you get this out of the box, there's a switch here. Um, if you turn it back this way, that means it's going to operate on 110. Alright, if your normal voltage is 220 to 250, it, the switch should be in the forward position, that way. If you plug this in with it not it, this switch not in the right position, it's going to blow it. So, it's going to end in tears for you. Alright. Now then, DC. Um, pretty straightforward. In fact, it's very straightforward. I've got the two middle ones here, if I was you. Just back them off so you get the wire in. Back them off like so. Black, negative. Goes in there. Actually, it's a bit too long, so just cut them back a little bit, trim them back a little bit. Like so. Negative. Black. In there. Positive. Red. In there. I'm all fingers and thumbs. So I'm trying to get into an angle where the camera can see what I'm doing as well. Yeah. Okay. Until I can uh, make a, a, a box, a shroud, to cover this entirely. I'm going to protect it as much as I can. Uh, I'm not recommending this. It's just a way that I'm doing it. You get a glue gun. Okay, you've got to be careful doing this. Okay, and this is the AC side. And you just cover Use silicon as well, but this is a very easy method to do it. So little fingers and not don't to get a shock. Like I say, this is the way I'm doing it as a temporary measure at the moment. 
because I've got grandchildren and if I'm out of the workshop and they're in here and this happens to be on and running um, you know you you've got to protect your little ones so when that's gone off turn it the other way so it doesn't run all over the circuit board inside because uh, this is inert this is uh, uh, like a, a plastic it's inert and um, it's uh, like similar to silicon now that is a, a very stable way of sealing those AC connections it's my way of doing it so I like I'm Look, saying you do uh, this at your own risk um, but what I'm saying is it is the method that uh, has worked for me in the past and um, it's the way I'm doing it but I cannot be held responsible for uh, uh, you know anybody's health Okay, well there it is uh, so far and it's coming along pretty well actually um, I just want to take you off subject for a minute and bring you over to to this because I've had numerous comments sent to me privately about some of the tooling that I have here so I'm just going to take a moment to describe and say exactly what this is Okay, I'll just turn the air conditioner off for a minute. You'll be able to hear what I'm saying. Um, this actually is, uh, it's about a hundred and, between 120 and 150 years old. Um, this would probably be found in a blacksmith's shop. This is a drill. Uh, but it's a very special drill. Um, used in I suppose small industry like a blacksmith shop um, because what's special about it is that it has uh, a mechanical powered down feed into the material so the way this works obviously you have a handle here that you, you turn this gear is connected not only to the drive gear to turn the drill but it's also connected to this flywheel. So when you build up some momentum and you start biting into, ma into the material, the steel or iron, uh, it you know, sort of drives it on, drives it on in. Now then, what is special about this is this mechanism here. It's just a little dog tooth on a gear on the underside of this. Now, as I turn this, watch this. You see, it takes it round one tooth at a time, and what that is doing is turning this screw, and that screw is feeding this down. It's a powered feed. Show you again. So this is a. Quite, for, for its time, quite a, should we say, a forward-looking um, bit of uh, drilling equipment. Um, this actually was made in Australia, because it's got a made in Australia in the casting at the back here. Now then, another thing I, I'd like to show you is this. Talking of blacksmiths. Um, this is made by a blacksmith and it's a whole, it's actually a dual hole cutter, dual size hole cutter. Um, and it's fitted into a brace. Now this is a brace. So this fits in here like this. And it gets tightened up, that's the chuck. And you hold it into the material like so and cut it like so. So this is again about 150 years old and that's a 
hole saw or hole cutter. Of course, the modern day version of, uh, <laughs> of this is a cordless drill and this. So that's how far we've progressed. So I thought you'd be interested in that uh, because I've had so many questions about it uh, and as we was uh, talking about this um, drill press um, I thought I'd show you this as well. So I think every, uh, every video or two I'll show you um, a different item that I have here uh, either in operation or as a, a, a bit of a display. Okay, uh, they've supplied um, a very good, should we say, representation of this board here and it's um, very easy to tell which plug goes where. Uh, each one is labelled uh, and it tells you quite precisely where it goes. So, um, right, power. Power is written on the board, this is power on the other side. So this one goes into here. Positive. Big fingers in there somehow. Okay, there we go. We're all plugged in. I'm not ready to um, zip tie everything up yet. Because um, we'll want to get the thing running first. And um, all bed leveled and everything but basically basically there it is well basically 
there it is. Um, we've still got to zip tie these cables up, but everything's connected. It's built and it's taken me uh, roughly four and a half, between four and a half and five hours because I've been off and on it because uh, I've been up and down back and forth to the office there. Um, so I think that'll be it for this video. And uh, should I get that out of the way? It's annoying. <laughs> I'll put it up there if I can reach. There we go. Okay. So basically, it's finished. Um, all by the switching on and leveling of the bed. Um, but I think I'm going to leave that till next video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video of uh, assembling this uh, A-Net or Anit, A-Net I think it is, um, A8. Um, look, it's not a bad machine. Um, we'll see how really good it is when we start operating it. Um, but there's a couple of there's a couple of safety issues as I just as I pointed out earlier. Um, Things probably could have been, you know, it basically it's a pretty good unit uh, so far. So um, I hope you've liked this video. Thumbs up, press like, little red box down there. That'll take you to my YouTube station where there's you now 161 videos on CNC routers, wood turning. There's uh, also cabinet making and um, different shop jobs I do around here I think uh, be pretty interesting for you. Uh, I also do um, a lot of AtCam and Mark III and NC Studio uh, tuition I suppose. Um, so I think there's something there for everyone and uh, now moving into 3D printing and 3D scanning which is all related to CNC routers really. Um, so till next time it's bye for now.